I'm a mix of Dutch, Portuguese, Arab, Chinese, and British. I'm a mix of Indian, English, and Chinese. We are mixed of Portuguese, Filipino, a bit of British, and a teeny weeny bit of Indian, and we are Eurasians! <laughs> The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeing new lands, but in seeing with new eyes. We look back into our history to remember our roots, to learn of our shared heritage at a group that despite being of two worlds, had established their presence here in Singapore, the Eurasians. The first is the Portuguese, I mean they came in 1511 to Malacca, followed by the Dutch and then the British. So. Uh, no surprise that most of the Eurasians in Singapore are of Portuguese descent. When many of these um, our forefathers or ancestors came, you know, European ancestors came, they were encouraged to marry locally, you know, so the Portuguese businessmen married the local Malay women and encouraged to do so in terms of the government offered them land and other benefits if they married the locals. While some were encouraged to marry native women for economic and political motives, by and large the Europeans look upon the natives with disdain and discrimination. In the early days, we were not accepted by the Europeans, either by the Asians. So we had difficulty in that way. So we as an individual have got to go out. Go out and, and prove what, uh, what we have, what qualities we have and what we can do. Left to fend for themselves, the Eurasian community multiplied in numbers with a great deal of intermarriages with other Eurasian families. By the 1930s, locally born Eurasians doubled the number of locally born Chinese. The Eurasian Association was formed in 1919. It was formed mainly to give the Eurasian community a voice, you know, in Singapore. So to act on behalf of the Eurasians in Singapore, in terms of like identity, you know, contribution in certain areas. Even though it was a, mainly a social club at that time, we also still helped the community in terms of education and welfare. So of course, you know, those who are more fortunate will help those who are less fortunate. And um, well, what it is now today, in 1994, we became a self-help group, just like CDAC, Mandaki and Sinda. So since then, that even strengthened our resolve to help the less fortunate. And our three key pillars are education, welfare and community development. The spirit of resilience has made the Eurasian presence in Singapore a prominent feature of today. Eurasians can be seen as aloof, above the other Singaporeans, but they had to forge their own identity, a home for themselves. When he was younger, um, my dad didn't come from a very well-off family, so he, after secondary school, he went straight to work, and then after work he went to the army, and like having a, a different last name, he had hedger on his shirt, so all the, his officers would always pick on him because he's not just a tan limb. You can easily remember and pick him out and say like, hey you, hedger, go and do this. So, I mean, instead of letting something that makes you stand out, bring you down, like he said, to always use it to your advantage, kind of like hook on to that and uh, just always give your best. Uh. I mean, if people are going to think badly of you, then you just have to prove them wrong. Uh. There's nothing else you can do. So it's kind of like an intrinsic kind of um, push, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they call me Amokia. You meet straight hair guy. And you? get offended when people call you that? Mm, sometimes. This person looks mixed. He, she looks mixed and they look a bit proud, a bit haughty, a bit... Not... I wouldn't want to like uh, uh, socialise with them. But I think it's really not true because we're just like any other Singaporean. We've come from, okay, different backgrounds, but the economic standards are all... It, it varies, uh, basically. So I think people shouldn't judge too quickly because they tend to maybe shut us out a bit thinking that we're too different and uh, yeah, just like really proud people that they don't want to mix with. But we're not! We're not! And people need to stop thinking that. <laughs> because of how racially diverse I am, I, I don't discriminate on the other races. So I'm fair to all of them and if like there's any racial jokes, it, I just take it in my stride because I don't, I don't find it offensive in any way. 
While their fellow Singaporean Chinese, Indians, and Malays had home countries to identify with, Eurasians only had Singapore. They are the only ethnic group that had truly evolved within Singapore. There will definitely be those who feel that we are still not um, a known presence or community. Well, we're a minority, you know, 17,000 in Singapore. So we could definitely hope to see more um, involvement or people knowing who are Eurasians, you know, and understanding the culture more. Because, I mean, we have various um, instances where people don't even know who are Eurasians and you know that they exist in Singapore and many often a lot of uh, Eurasians grow up feeling um, like a foreigner they get mistaken for a foreigner you know? and uh, when people don't understand the culture like oh okay so you know you have a Chinese mother and German father they they might automatically assume oh you're a foreigner but you know the person may have been staying in Singapore for many years and very much so, you know, a, a Singaporean. These Eurasians have been staying in Asia, in Singapore, for many years. They associate more with the place where they live. And so they associate themselves more as Singaporeans and not really as Europeans. But what they keep from uh, the European side is the traditions that were passed down. So the Portuguese, they brought the love for music, for dancing, you know, that is still very much alive in the Eurasian culture. Parties, celebrating, you know, all our New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas parties. The Dutch, they brought perhaps their regimented style of administration. For the British, they emphasized the need for a common language and for education. So English as a common language and you know getting a good education and uh, will give better prospects in career you know, and generally in life. A Singaporean always identifies with food and this is not an exception with the Eurasians. Eurasian food is actually a traditional fusion. Tradition that has been passed down for the past 500 years it's popularly known as curry devil, but the actual name for it is actually curry debal. Debal is a Patua Portuguese word meaning leftovers. So it was actually done, served uh, on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, where all the rolls, all the meats that were left from Christmas make into this curry and then uh, that's how the curry was formed. So a lot of people didn't know the meaning of debal. So they thought that it was devil. So it became more popularly known as uh, curry devil than curry devil. Suji cake is a very traditional Eurasian cake. It is a cake where it is a must-have on big occasions for every Eurasian family. To us early Singaporeans, the first insiders, this is our city where the diamond of our Eurasian days abides where our children find themselves, compete, reach for the sky. We move in nostalgia, ceremony, narrative, your ignition and combustion, in your salt, water, earth, air, anticipating your further history, the merging of the tribes as we start another hope, another vision, another journey. Singaporeans don't have to have black hair, they can also have, like their parents are mixed and they also can have uh, red hair uh, yeah, red hair and brown hair We, we the, the citizens, citizens of Singapore pledge ourselves as one Eurasian people regardless of race, language or religion to build a democratic society rich and justice and equality so as to achieve happiness, prosperity and progress for our nation